I forgot to say I've got a built-in VA system. <laughs> uh, hey guys, it's good to be back with you. Good to Thank have you, you back. for allowing yeah. your pastor to take the time to go with Dr. Jerry Williamson and I uh, to Tanzania and do two back-to-back -back conferences speaking during the day, all day, and several hours at night. And uh, Andrew was a very key player in the night services. Many people received a, an amazing touch of heaven through his ministry. Yeah. I'll tell you, I appreciate your pastor. We do too. Yeah. He has not only a heart for you, and, uh, you know, I could probably say some more nice things, but since he really gave me a hard time, <laughs> that's it, brother. <laughs> that's all you get. I'm praying more for Kimberly than I ever have now. <laughs> he doesn't realize that I get the last word. <laughs> but this, uh, Sherry, please stand up. Uh, if you've not met my beautiful bride, and woo, she's the hottest babe on the block. <laughs> That's my wife, Sherry. We just got through celebrating 37 years of marriage. <laughs> and, uh, it's not all been easy. No, it never is. Not that long. After you understand a little bit more about me, You'll understand my statement. Uh -huh. <laughs> but thank God, the Holy Spirit is doing something in the earth. And I think that Tree of Life is a key yeah. component Amen. to I what He is about to release yeah. upon the earth. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I have several scriptures, and the title of my message this morning is and sometimes I hate this iPad. Uh, I should have already been prepared, but I'll tell you, uh, Jay, where are you? Brother, you knocked it out of the park this morning. Yes. Amen. He always does. I want to talk to you about your potential, but the, the title of my message this morning is What If? And if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to uh, John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 63, is going to be the key component of what I want to center my thoughts around this morning. And I promise you, I probably won't preach over a couple of hours. Yeah, and it's on the wall. Oh, it's on the wall. <laughs> Wow, that's the first time I noticed that. Yeah, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. But the words that I speak of you, they are spirit and they are life. I want to say to you that what the Holy Spirit has birthed in my heart for you is simply to ask you the question, what if? What if God is pointing his finger at you? to do the miraculous. Amen. What if God's speaking to your heart to go to the neighborhood? What if God is talking to you about intercessory prayer and breaking the bread of life and laying your life down so that he may take your life up and utilize you not only in this congregation and this community, but around the world? Yeah. You have to understand something. God is about to release kingdom over the body of Christ. And the way we imagine kingdom is not what it's going to look like. Past moves of the Holy Spirit are past moves of the Holy Spirit. So we have to prepare our heart that what if the Holy Spirit says something to us? Do we have enough understanding and discernment of the Holy Spirit to understand clearly what He's saying to us. Yeah. 
Most people, the only time they ever take their Bible is when they pick it up to come to church. They don't have a clue. And when they get into storms and difficulties, the first thing they do is call the pastor, I need help. When the help is right here. Right. Yes. 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 The help is right here. Preach it, Jim. Yes. Amen. You have to understand that this word is life. Amen. It's alive. Jesus said to these disciples that he was talking to, and some of them was about to leave him because they couldn't they couldn't grasp the reality of what he was talking about. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that He speaks to you are spirit and they are life. What is He speaking to you today? What is He telling you? I'll tell you what the enemy is telling you. He's telling you, well, what if this is not real? What if if, uh, uh, President Trump doesn't get reelected? What if... President Biden gets reelected. What if this happens in the world? What what if uh, my money runs out? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? But I'm here to tell you that Jesus said that he is the supplier of every need. Amen. My God shall supply my every need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. Hello. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. Well, I, you know, I can't do that. I, I don't know how to do that. Well, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of God, given to you a spirit of wisdom yes. and revelation yes. and the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know the hope of His calling and the exceeding greatness of His power. Yes. Praise the Lord, yes. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the one to come. And he gave him to be the head over the church, which is his body, who fills all in all. I'm looking for some spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, tongue-talking, devil-talking, Bible-believing people that will declare and decree over their life, over their family. Amen. Thank you. That revival starts here. Yes. Yes. That Holy Ghost move starts here. Here. Yes, amen. amen. What if he's pointing the finger at you to be the one? Uh-huh. What if he's speaking to you? You know, it's amazing to me as I, I, I struggled with this message. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I told Paul, I said, I think I'll just get on the plane and go home. <laughs> Because all I could hear in my spirit is, what if? I said, okay, Lord, what if? What if? What if there's someone here that'll take hold of the the opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to break loose in them? And when he breaks loose in you, something has to happen. That's right. Your character, number one, changes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes. You have to understand that what the Holy Spirit wants to do is to release in you more than you have the capacity to receive. Yes. Right. Yes. Overflowing. And the reason you don't have the capacity to receive it Maybe it is because there's unforgiveness in your heart. Uh Come on. It might be simply because, hey, guess what? What if the Holy Spirit spoke to you and said clearly, you know you've been holding this grudge. You've been holding this attitude. Mm. And you have not repented. 
Wow. And I can't move through you because everything that you speak is skewed with what you think. Mm. Oh, that's a Holy Ghost. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, somebody better. That was for somebody. Help us, Lord. Ah. You see, you have to understand that in order to be walking with the Holy Spirit in such a connection, I was reading a story about Catherine Kuhlman. Have you ever heard of Catherine yeah. Kuhlman? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. February of 1976, she was in a hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She was dying. And there was a young nurse, first shift she'd ever been on, walked into the ICU room where she was at. And the smell of roses, the fragrance was, of roses was overwhelming. And she told a previous nurse, she says, listen, I'm going to die February the 13th at 1.13 in the morning. And tell them all I want at the flowers I want at my funeral are red roses. Put your head around this. The young nurse walks out and about that time the head nurse comes and rebukes the young nurse because you're not allowed to have flowers in ICU, evidently. <laughs> and the young nurse steps back in and said, there's no flowers in here. <laughs> and at 1.13 a.m. in the morning she breathed her last breath but get this another nurse walks in holding what she had scribbled down the last words of Catherine Kuhlman I want red roses at my funeral. The room was filled with roses. Four floors down was filled with the fragrance of red roses. <laughs> Across the walkway and into the other part of the hospital, the fragrance of red roses was permeating the whole place. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> what if uh -huh. <laughs> yes, thank you. that you get in such a connection of the Holy Spirit in your life uh -huh. that when you time ends and you start to step over the mantle yes. that is on your life carries over to someone else uh -huh. Yes. Yep. Praise the Lord. So what kind of mantle are you carrying? Huh. What if the Holy Spirit decides and determines that you are the one? You are the one. You are the one to take the gospel around the world. Yeah. You are the one to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Yeah. You are the one Amen. to open blind eyes. Yes. Hallelujah. What are you going to do with it? What if? Yes. What if? There's always the possibility somewhere, somehow, that God, you say, but you don't understand. I don't have the proper education. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't understand. What if? What if the Holy Spirit is... Mm. Is put his finger in your spirit, man, right now. Uh -huh. And said, I have got to have what it takes for me <laughs> to be someone's deliverer. Uh -huh. 
Are you you're really quiet. What's going on? What is this? We want to hear every word. I mean, everybody's quiet except her. <laughs> you're all right. Yeah. At least I get eight men out of you every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. What if I think about I think about Jesus when he came to his disciples in Matthew's gospel. And he began to ask him, he said, Who do you say that I am? Uh And they said, Well, some people think you're Elijah. Or one of the other prophets. And then he looked and he said, But who do you say that I am? And Peter's response was, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus' response to this revelation was, Simon bar Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Yeah. You've got to understand, you can't get what I'm talking about by your head. Uh-huh. You cannot, you cannot get this anointing that I'm talking about by trying to analyze it and critique it with your brain. Because your brain is an enemy against God and always will be. If you don't believe it, look at Romans chapter 8, verse 7. And most of the church... This may be the last time I get to speak here if I say this, Lord. It's okay. What if it's not the last time? (laughs) Most of the church thinks that they can think their way to heaven. Because we have been so conditioned by the world's terminology and the world's theology and the world's philosophy. But what if we determine, I'm not going to listen to what those jackasses say. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Amen. Hey, listen. I ask the Lord all the time, why in the world do you decide to use me? He said, I've used jackasses before. (laughs) So if you get offended to that, get over it. I can say a lot more. What if that all of a sudden, Romans 12 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice by the renewing of what? Your mind. Our mind. How do we get our mind renewed? In the Word. By the Word. Right. And what does the Word do? It either, it either challenges us to change and mold us into the image of Jesus Christ or... We lay it down and say, you know, that's too hard. That's too difficult. But what if, what if, one of the things that when I was praying about this morning service, and I I don't know how we're going to do this, Pastor Andrew, but I believe that this morning service, uh, even from the get-go when you were praying around in the circle, and I'm going to talk to you uh, here for a minute. I'm going to talk to you, Pastor, a minute. Is that all right? But I believe that this is a Sunday for impartation. Amen. Amen. That's what this whole message is, is about. Uh-huh. Is, is that what the Holy Spirit is breathing in and through this pastor and in and through the ministers that are represented here today. That what we have, we must give away. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 
Amen. Now I already see somebody say, I don't want none of this. Oh, I do. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Sucker! Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. You're going to get it. Amen. If it chokes every cow in Texas. Good. Good. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. I, I need for you to lighten up a little bit. Let me tell you a story. There was this mental institution, and these guys were hanging out the window saying, 13, 13, 13. And there's a man walking down the sidewalk, and there was a hole in the fence, and he put his head up there and looked, and the guy jabbed him in the eye with a stick. And they said, 14, 14, 14. <laughs> At least some of you got it. <laughs> what if? What if you're the one that's walking down the beach? By the way, you have some great beaches here. You're walking down the beach. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you just like he did to Peter, James, and John. Follow me. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Yeah. That's right. One of the things that that as a missionary, one of the things the Holy Spirit has allowed me to see, Sherry and I to see, is many miracles have taken place. As we've ministered and traveled around the world and lived in Russia for a bunch of years and started doing ministry there in 92, I did not want to go to Russia. Are you listening to me? Neither do I like hot weather, but I really don't like cold weather. <laughs> and you make one trip to Russia, and you have to take your clothes out of your suitcase and stuff them around the hotel window to keep from the wind coming in at minus 36 degrees. And they decide to turn the hot water on only one hour each day. And the whole team looking, trying to determine what God was doing and God was doing miraculous things. But old Jim Bob wanted to be on the plane. He's Jehovah Sneaky. <laughs> Are you hearing me? My wife said in 87 we were called to Russia and I said, you're crazy. I shouldn't have said that. Don't ever say never either. That's right. That's right. And after many years of going and being there, watching the Holy Spirit do the miracles that he, he's done. Ten year, seven to ten year old boy, terminally ill with tuberculosis, gets up. Nobody touching him. Nobody. You listen to me. I didn't anoint him with oil. I didn't pray a prayer over him. I didn't say any word to him. I never even knew he was alive. They little some friends of his carried him in and set him on the front row during worship. And I was worshiping, so I wasn't paying any attention to him. But when the Holy Spirit decided that he was going to do the healing and moved into the building and 38 people miraculously gets healed, and I'm not even touching anybody. Uh -huh. 
And they come to give testimony. He's the first one that comes. And the interpreter interviewing him says, ask him what's going on. He said, the doctor says I'm dying with tuberculosis and that I only have a short time to live. And my friends brought me here. Uh, one of my friends goes to this pastor's church that was organ part of the organization of the gathering. And uh, I was sitting there uh, when everybody was singing and all of a sudden there was a fire came down and lit up on my shoulders and burned clear through my body. So I said to the interpreter, ask him to do something that he couldn't do before. He jumps off the stage, runs around this huge auditorium, it was about 15 times the size of this one, runs around the inside of it, there was over a thousand people in the, uh, in the auditorium, he goes to the exit door on my right, runs out that door, comes around the building and comes back in and he's not even breathing hard. <laughs> what if? What if? Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. You have to understand that the potential that God has put into your heart and your life is more than you can dream, think, or imagine. You ought to meditate on Ephesians chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. Because I believe that we're about to encounter some of the greatest moves of the Holy Spirit that we have ever experienced. Amen. And I truly believe because uh, you have such a heart for the nations that God is going to point his finger at churches that have a heart for the nations and he's going to begin to multiply. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm stepping. No, I'm not sorry. I'm about to step over into the prophetic. That I believe that the Holy Spirit is releasing something over this congregation, an atmospheric shift, if you will, of an empowerment upon you as the body of Christ. That the miracles are going to happen through you. That the signs and wonders are going to happen through you. That the anointing is going to happen through you. That what if, what if God does this? Are you willing? For it to happen in you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, let it happen. Because you... Let it be, Lord. I got to give you a little secret here. In order for that to happen, you've got to live with a yes in your heart. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes Lord, Amen. yes. Let me tell you some more miracles. <clears throat> First mission trip. Second mission trip in Guatemala. Young kid. We were going from hut to hut praying for people. Inviting them to the evangel, uh, the services at night. And this grandfather, he had a he had a sore on his arm that was infected, and he'd been treating it with jungle remedy. And we had some nurses, and so they doctored it and cleaned it up. And then through an interpreter, he asked us to pray for his grandson. About that time, the little boy walked in. This arm, his left arm, was half the size of this arm, and it had no use. And so the team gathered around, and I took his hands, and I just prayed, Lord, I'll read in your word where you did this. I know you can do it again. Yes, amen. We prayed, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. 
The next day, my responsibility as a, uh, one of the team was to, as we had a blessing clinic and people would come through and they get medicine and they get clothes and whatever we had to give away. My responsibility was to pray for people as they came through. And as I was praying, I recognized the grandfather as he come through because of the dressing on his arm that the nurses the previous day before had done. But I didn't know this little boy that started pulling on my shirt sleeve. Guess what hand he was using to pull on? Hallelujah. Yes. And now the left hand was the same size as the right hand. What if that's you? Yes. What about God using you? Yes, thank you, Lord. Do it, Lord, yes. Because I'm no different than you are. Yeah. Right. Uh, come on now. That's you, right. Yeah. You've heard me preach two or three times. You know I'm not that great a preacher. <laughs> come on. I'm talking about you. You say, you, you say but you, how did you do it? I didn't do it. That's right. I didn't do it. No. I was willing for the Lord to make me look foolish. Uh -huh. it, and he didn't it didn't take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't take a lot. Come on. I think my wife had blinders on when she said yes. <laughs> she saw in the spirit. Maybe it's because I was such a hunk. I don't know. <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit in the service at the end of the week 200 children sitting on tarps. And I'm preaching. And I've been praying all week, brother, for this one elderly man. I sent my wife, he was a stonemason, and I sent my wife to buy him new tools to work concrete with. And we gave them to him. He was lost, lost, lost. And every night I preached about Jesus' love, Andrew, and he never came forward. I said, God, you got to do something. I don't want to leave here without that man knowing you. And there was so, we were going to pray for all the children. And so me and another guy by the name of Jimmy, we, they set us two chairs and we sat down in the middle of the kids and we were praying for them. And all of a sudden, here comes a mom with her little girl was deaf and mute. And so... The first thing I did, I put my hands over her ears and commanded that deaf spirit to leave in the name of Jesus. And sent one of our team kind of in the back and spoke and suddenly she turned around. People thought, huh? Huh? Well, you know, I was about to come up off that chair then. And I rebuked that mute spirit and commanded her to speak. And as clear as I can articulate this, she looked up at her mama 
And for the first time, she was born deaf and born mute. She looks up and says, Mama, Mama, when she does, 40 elderly men get up from the back. The stonemason being the first one and ran to the altar and gave their heart to Christ. What if? What if that's you? What if that's you that you, God, uses you? Yes, yes. The only thing keeping it from happening is you. That's right. What do you do? Do away with the clock? <laughs> yes. Yes, forget the clock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, some of these folks kind of look like they're bored. No, they're not bored. No. The Holy Spirit. I mean, Andrew calls me an agitator. I, I guess I, I really am. You, 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 good agitator. You, you really nailed it correctly. Fine. I hope I agitate your spirit so much. Yes. Yes. That you, you, when you leave here, you, there's no way that you can stay the same Amen. the way you came in. Good. You see, God wants to use you That's to right. do the miraculous. Yes. Amen. He's put your pastors uh, in, in position here to disciple you and to train you and to equip you so that you can be raised up and go out and experience the harvest that I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. You've got to understand, it is not his job to go out and do all the harvesting. No. It is your responsibility. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Well, well, well. 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 You know what that is? That's the world's smallest violin, and my heart bleeds for you because I, I can tell this whether you like this or not. Because I'm here to tell you, God intends for some of you to be awakened to the power of the anointing that is already displayed in your life when Jesus saved you and recreated your spirit, man, and brought you to life out of death and sin and the grave and took life in you. And so, what if? What if? What if you're the next Paul? The next Peter? The next John? Going somewhere... Well, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I'm reading a book about a young lady. Well, she's probably in her 50s now. Lord, send me where no one else wants to go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and her story of the turmoil, the heartache, in one particular village in Uganda, she wakes up in the middle of the night in her little house. The huts are on fire. 
Men and women are drug out, raped, and shot, and killed. And she's praying first out of fear. Lord, what do I do about this? What do I do about this? And then all of a sudden, Holy Spirit arrests her heart and says, you speak love. Yes. What if? <laughs> what if God points His finger at you? Now for the rest of the story. Yeah, let's hear it. Are you ready for yeah. it? Yeah. You want to hear the rest of it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I know she does. Yeah, so do I. How about, you want to hear the rest of it? Yeah. 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 He's already pointed his finger at you. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Look to your neighbor and say, I get it. Yes, I get it. I get it. Amen. I get it. Now, Jay, where are you? Are you still way back there? He's back there. Yeah. What's the matter, bro? You, you afraid I'll spit on you or something? Come on up here. You want to put on a CD or do you want to leave worship? It's up to you. Well, how are you going to play and pray? Oh, we'll pray. I want to, I want to, we want to pray in partition. So you want to put a, tell them to put some worship on or something? Yeah, where's Joe? Joe, Joe, where are you at, Joe? Yeah, Joe. Oh, praise the Lord. Miracles. 
you have to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your spirit to release what's in your heart. And you can only release out of your heart what's in your heart. So if miracles are in your heart, miracles are going to get released. Come on now, I'm I'm teaching you something. So if you want prayer, you come in line across here for these elders to come and pray for you.
Let some of those that's not been able to get up here be prayed for. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord, we ask for your miraculous power to be released in these men. I'm asking, Lord, that they would be amazed at what you want to do in them and through them. That their testimonies, Lord, will bring many to Christ. Lord, I thank you for victory. I thank you for supernatural encounters of heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Father, have mercy.